In this video, I'll calculate the volume of a circular wedge cut from a cylinder by thinking about cross sections. A wedge is cut from a cylinder using a plane that has an angle of 45 degrees. We're asked to set up an integral to calculate the volume of the wedge by thinking about triangle shaped cross sections. We can think of the wedge as a solid whose base is a semicircle and whose cross sections are triangles. Since the cylinder has radius 6, we can think of the semicircle as having the equation x squared plus y squared equals 6 squared, or 36. The cross sections are triangles that are right triangles because they're formed from the horizontal base of the cylinder and the vertical sides of the cylinder. Since one angle of the right triangle is 45 degrees and one angle is 90 degrees, the remaining angle must be 45 degrees. So these are isosceles right triangles. And the area of such a triangle is given by a equals 1 half s squared, where s is the side length. That's because the base of the triangle and the height of the triangle are both the same number that I'm calling s. Now, this side length s is not the same for all the triangles. Some of these triangles down near the bottom of the semicircle are going to be really tiny triangles, and the ones towards the middle are going to be much bigger. So the side length is depending on the position that we're at on the base. And in fact, the side length is given by the x-coordinate of a point on this semicircle. So I'm going to write down that the area is 1 half s squared, but that's the same thing as 1 half x squared, where x is the coordinate of a point on the semicircle. Now to find the volume, I'm going to need to integrate these areas, and I'm going to integrate dy because my cross sections are thin in the y direction. My bounds of integration are going to be given by the smallest y value, that's negative 6 since it's a circle of radius 6, up to the largest y value of 6. I can replace my a for area by the formula 1 half s squared, which we said was the same thing as 1 half x squared dy. I'm not quite done yet because my integrands in terms of x, but I need to integrate in terms of y, and therefore I need to change my x's into y's. Fortunately, I have an equation to do this. I know that x squared plus y squared equals 36 from the equation of the circle, and therefore x squared is 36 minus y squared. So now I'm going to replace my x squared with 36 minus y squared, and I'm finished setting up my integral. If we prefer, we could also set up the integral as the integral from 0 to 6 of 1 half times 36 minus y squared dy, and then double it, because the symmetry of the figure means we could just take the volume of the top half and multiply it by 2. If we write it this way, then the integral simplifies to the integral from 0 to 6 of 36 minus y squared. Either way, if we went ahead and integrated it, we would find an answer of 144 units cubed for the volume. In this video, we use cross sections to find the volume of a circular wedge. The main steps were to identify the cross sections and their area, to find the equation for the curve that bounds the base, to set up our integral by integrating the areas, and then to use our equation for the base to convert from x's to y's. This wedge problem can also be done a different way, by using rectangular cross sections instead of triangular cross sections. And I encourage you to give it a try. 